If you get seriously into emulation, eventually a time may become when you want to graduate from a keyboard or USB controller to a proper arcade style joystick and button setup. There are a lot of options for turning your Raspberry Pi into the core of an arcade cabinet, and they range from the simple to the elaborate. The method I'll cover in this video is a fairly simple one, requiring only some wire, the controls themselves, and some means of mounting them. This setup uses the Raspberry Pi's GPIO headers, or General Purpose Input and Output headers, to connect the joystick and buttons. A piece of software called RetroGame then runs on the Raspberry Pi, allowing signals on those GPIO headers to be interpreted as virtual keyboard buttons being pressed. Because only a subset of the GPIO headers are available for use in this way, the number of buttons you can add is limited. Every button and joystick direction needs its own header. Even so, you should be able to add enough controls for at least one player to play just about any game. As far as the controls themselves go, I got mine from Adafruit Store because they're guaranteed to be compatible with the Raspberry Pi. However, it's not necessary to buy them from there. Most digital arcade joysticks and buttons from most suppliers will work fine. For the purposes of this video, I'll be creating a very simple setup with one small 8-way digital joystick and two 30mm arcade buttons. But you can use the same principles to keep adding controls until you run out of GPIO pins. Most likely, you'll want to mount these controls in an attractive case once you have everything installed. But for now, I have everything laid out using a breadboard. The ribbon cable coming out of the Raspberry Pi is connected to a Pi cobbler, which connects the Pi's GPIO pins to the breadboard. Every connection above or below the cobbler on the breadboard is electrically connected to the pin directly above or below it. I'll start by connecting one of the buttons. In order to that, I need to make sure that one of the button's terminals is connected to a grounded GPIO pin, and the other one is connected to an available numbered pin. Exactly which are available depends on your Raspberry Pi model, but GPIO pins 2, 3, 14, and 15 are reserved by the Raspberry Pi for specific uses and can't be used for your controls. Each GPIO pin you use must be connected to only one control, no doubling up on the pins. Make sure you unplug the power before connecting anything to the GPIO pins. I'll start by connecting a wire lead to ground, and I'll choose GPI on a 19 to connect the other lead. I'll do the same for my other button, using GPI of hour instead. If I were doing this permanently, I'd solder the end of these wires to the button's terminals, but since this is a temporary setup, I'll use alligator clips instead. I'll connect one end of each clip to the wires and then connect the other end to each of the button's terminals. Keep in mind that the button is reversible. Either terminal can be ground, I'll do this for both buttons. If you don't have a pie cobbler or a breadboard, you can use female to male wire leads to connect the controls to your GPIO pins or use solder if necessary. I highly recommend a breadboard for prototyping like this, however, it's much easier to experiment or undo mistakes. The joystick is a little bit different than the buttons since it has only one ground but four other wires. Each of those four represents a different stick direction and you'll have to refer to your stick's documentation to find out which is which. Note which direction is connected to which pin. That'll be essential for properly configuring your Pi to understand which direction on the stick corresponds to which direction in-game. I'll connect my joystick's left wire to GPI 16, right to 21, up to 23, and down to 24, and I'll plug the last wire into ground. Now that you have your controls connected, the hardware side is ready to go. Time to configure your Raspberry Pi software to use it. Now that you have your hardware controls physically connected to your Raspberry Pi, it's time to install the software that will allow you to use them in-game. Because my controls are connected to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO headers, 
I need to use a program that will allow the Pi to interpret those controls as keyboard presses. Fortunately, Adafruit developed such a program, RetroGame. To install RetroGame, you'll need to get to your Raspberry Pi's command line interface. You can do this from Emulation Station by pressing Start, then choosing Quit and Quit Emulation Station. This should leave you at a prompt. The RetroGame code is stored online in a Git repository, which you may remember if you installed RetroPie manually. If you did not install RetroPie manually, then you'll have to install the Git program to proceed. Use the command sudo apt git install git. This will install git using the apt git package handling utility. The process here will be similar to installing RetroPie. I need to clone the git code repository onto my local Pi. Start in your home directory, in my case is home and Pi, and then enter the command git clone, followed by the web address of the RetroGame code. In this case, it's Adafruit RetroGame. That is case sensitive. Press enter and the Git program will copy the code to the same directory. You can see I now have an Adafruit Retro Game directory. In this directory, there are only two files that you need to be concerned with to get your controls working. The first is the Retro Game program itself, which you'll need to have running in order for the button presses and joystick movements to be recognized. The second file is in the config subdirectory, called Retro Game subdirectory called RetroGame Sub subdirectory. This is where the key presses themselves are defined. I'll be editing this file, so I want to make a backup in case I make a mistake. I'll do that with a command cp RetroGame sub s RetroGame. The first file is in the configuration preference given. I'll do that with the configuration preference. Now there's a fresh copy in case something gets messed up. I'll use the nanotext editor to edit the RetroGame web file. You can see that there are some instructions, followed by a list of keys and their corresponding GPIO pins. What you need to do is change the GPIO pin numbers next to the controls that you want to use, and then remove the other lines to avoid conflicts. Each control can have one pin number next to it, except you can have one control bound to two simultaneous pins separated by a space. I have the left control on my joystick connected to pin 16, so I'll remove the 4 and replace it with 16. The right is connected to pin 21, up is connected to pin 23, and down is connected to pin 24. As for my buttons, I have the A button bound to pin 19 and the B button bound to pin 4. To exit a ROM, I want to be able to press A and B together, so I'll change escape to 19 space 4. Now that I have those configured, I'll remove the other lines to avoid problems. You can use Ctrl plus K to remove entire lines in Nano to save some time. If you want to add more controls later, you can add keys back in. The key names are defined in the key table H file in the main Adafruit directory. Use the key names in quotes if you want to add a new line to RetroGame ERG. Now that I have my keys added and all the extra ones removed, I'll hit Control and O and then Enter to save and then Control and X to exit. Now it's time to test. Use the command cd space dot dot to go up one level into the Adafruit RetroGame as sudo because it has to read system level files. So type sudo dot slash RetroGame and you need to give it the configuration files relative path. So uh, config slash RetroGame. Um, and because it's in the config subdirectory, hit enter, and you should see RetroGame assigning virtual keys to GPIO pins. If you see any invalid pin errors, double check that you don't have any extra spaces or other characters in RetroGame VGM. Now that RetroGame is running, press some keys and wiggle the joystick, and you should see it reporting key presses. If it does not,
then you should double check your wiring, especially if you're using a breadboard. Since everything seems to be working, I'll hit Ctrl and C to quit Retro Game. Now I'd like to start up on boot so I don't have to manually run Retro Game every time I restart my Pi. I'll go into the configs directory and then copy the Retro Game web file into slash boot by using the following command sudo cp retro game web slash boot. The retro game program automatically looks for slash boot slash retro game web as its default configuration file. So now retro game can start without having to be manually supplied a configuration file location. Just remember to make any configuration changes to the slash boot slash retro game registry file if you want to change your controls. Next I'll have to start retro game to start automatically. sudo nano the slash etset slash rc local file. This opens up a list of commands that will be run automatically at boot. Ignore the commands that are already there, then add a new line above exit 0. On this line, run the retro game command using its full path. In my case, it's slash home slash pi, although you should replace pi with your username slash Adafruit retro game. Then I'll add a space and an ampersand, which tells the operating system to run the command in the background. Hit Control and O and Enter to save, and Control and X to exit. Finally, you have to restart to commit all the changes and test the system. So command sudo shutdown with a minus command to tell it to restart and a now command to tell it run immediately. Once your Pi boots back up, you can configure your new controls in emulation station by pressing start on an existing controller and choosing configure input. Then Hold one of your keyboard keys to configure the keyboard. Assign your controls using any mix of joystick, buttons, or normal keyboard keys. Skip over any controls you don't want to configure. Then hit OK to save. Congratulations, your new arcade controls are ready to be used in-game.